This lesson is for Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Cells. It's the beginning of our unit on cells and kingdoms. You can see at the right um, side of the screen here are the vocabulary that we'll be discussing for this lesson. Uh, vocab words include organism, cell, unicellular, multicellular, chlorophyll, tissue, organ, an organ system. Um, let's get right to it and think about what do um, different things have in common. What does a giant squid and an amoeba have in common? Well, what they have in common is that they're both organisms. Let's look at the definition. An organism is any living thing that can carry out life on its own. So in a nutshell, simple way, an organism is any living thing. And what do our living things made out of? Cells. And cells are the smallest unit of living things that carry out those basic life processes from an amoeba to a giant squid to a frog to you and me. We are all organisms and we're all made of cells. Where do cells come from? Well, cells come from other cells. They grow and split off of each other and they continue to grow that way. Every cell and every living thing originally came from another cell. It divided or split into two new cells and so did the cell before that and so on. There are two types of cellular organisms. They are unicellular and multicellular. Let's look at the definition for unicellular. A unicellular organism is a one-celled organism, and it carries out all those basic life processes. Uni, the prefix, means one. So one cell, pretty easy. Well, what are life processes? What, how do you know that something's alive? The basic life processes are these. You have to be able to grow. You have to be able to respond to your environment, which means when you when it's hot outside, you know it's hot. When it's cold outside, you know it's cold. If it's raining, you know it's raining, and so on. You, you can respond and react to your environment and know what to do in those situations. You have to be able to reproduce. You have to be able to make more of yourself, whether it's through live birth, hatching. You have to be able to have offspring. You have to be able to get food. You need energy to live. If you need energy to live, that means you're living. So, getting food. And you also need to be able to get rid of your waste. You have to be able to go to the bathroom. You have to be able to sweat. You have to be able to, to do those things. That's what makes you considered to be alive. Okay? So, unicellular organisms do that, like the amoeba. Well, what are you and me are not unicellular. We are multicellular, which means we are a many-celled organism. Um, multi means many cellular so multi many cells okay um, multicellular organisms include frogs trees me and you and we also carry out our own life processes um, our cells work together to take care of different functions um, of the organisms for example your heart muscles those cells carry out their own life processes and they keep your heart beating and then your brain has brain cells and that keeps your brain going and so on um, believe it or not, there's there's one and a half million kinds of organisms that have been identified, and it's estimated that that number is really small compared to the number of unicellular organisms that exist and they haven't been identified. They scientists are estimating that there's more than a billion kinds of unicellular organisms. Let's discuss the two different types of cells. We're going to discuss animal cells and plant cells, and we're going to discuss the organelles. Organelles are these things floating in the cell. Um, I'll try to give you analogies to help you uh, compare. Um, the analogy may work for you. It may not. I apologize. And if it doesn't, and you try to think of something that will work for you. Okay? Um, your own body has more than 200 different kinds of cells. Plant and animal cells have different basic structures, which are organelles, and that helps them carry out those life processes. Just like you have organs, like your heart and your brain, 
Your lungs, those are organs that helps keep you alive. Your cells has organelles, which are comparable here, to help them to stay alive. And let's talk about them. This is the animal cell. The first organelle is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is, if you imagine you have water in a cup, the actual plastic part of the cup, the cup itself, is like a cell membrane. That's the outside layer of the cell. It, it gives it its shape. Um, it keeps everything in control. It tells what can go in and can go out, just like the cup controls what liquid or ice is inside the cup, and it can't let it out, and so on and so forth. It's in control. Um, nothing is able to enter or leave unless it goes through the cell membrane. Okay, The cell membrane is full of cytoplasm, which is comparable to the water in your cup or the liquid in your cup. Um, that occupies the space um, in the cell, which contains your nucleus and other organelles. Um, and everything kind of floats. It's very kind of jello-like, I guess you could say. It supports all these other structures, keeps them moving, kind of like ice moving in a cup. It's kind of stream-like. The nucleus, this one here, um, this is your cell's control center. It would be comparable to your teacher who's telling you what to do, giving you instruction, if you wanted to go bigger, it could be like the principal of your school. It could be the superintendent of your school. It's whoever's giving you instructions or who's ever in control. That's the nucleus of, of you, your situation. Okay, The nucleus in the animal cell, it's large and round. It's usually found in the center. It has openings that allow materials to pass in and out. It, the cells grow and move, and they may divide, and that's all because the nucleus told it to. It's the boss. The next organelle is the mitochondria. It's these here. The mitochondria is these little um, little tiny power plants. They give the cell its energy. I always compare it to Popeye and Popeye spinach. Popeye, whenever he needed energy, he just quickly popped out some spinach, ate it. He quickly had the energy and strength that he needed to keep on going. The mitochondria are comparable here because they give the cells its energy to keep on going. Um, cells that require lots of energy, like muscle cells, they usually have a lot of mitochondria. And then the last one we're talking about here is the vacuoles, which are these here. Um, they are your closets. They store stuff. Um, they store water, food, waste. The nucleus can signal when the, the vacuole to release whatever it may need in its storing. In animal cells, you'll notice you have small and many vacuoles. Some animal cells may not have any vacuoles at all. Okay, so again, the organelles, these are organelles that we discussed, are the cell membrane, the outside of the cup, cytoplasm, the water in the cup, the nucleus, which is your boss, your command center, your mitochondria, which is like Popeye spinach, and the vacuoles, which are your closet storing water, food, and waste. And let's compare the animal cell and its organelles to the plant cell. The plant cell has many of the same structures that you saw in the animal cell. The mitochondria, vacuoles, nucleus, cytoplasm. Um, but it's what you can notice is that it's in a different shape. It has a different color and it has a few extra... Um, organelles here. So let's discuss those that are different. So first we notice it has a box shape. And it's got an extra layer. You just notice that the cell membrane is here, but it also on the outside has an extra layer of protection. That's called the cell wall. Um, the cell wall is a stiff structure outside the cell membrane. That gives that plant extra support because plants need more support. Notice the vacuole here. It's different. It's really large, and there's only one, and it's in the center. Um, plants store excess water. They provide extra support. Um, the extra water in the vacuoles of the plant, they keep the plant from drying out. So plants need a lot more water because they're on their own. Uh, they can't run out and get food like you and me, so they need to make sure they have plenty of water, and that's why they have one large central vacuole compared to the animal cells 
um, multiple small vacuoles or no vacuoles. And then why is this green? Because plants make their own food. That's chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is made in the chloroplast. Chloroplast is a green structure where energy from the sunlight is used to produce food for the plant. Chloroplasts produce chlorophyll, and that's why it's green. Chlorophyll, chlorophyll excuse me, is able to use energy from the sunlight. So without chloroplast, you wouldn't have chlorophyll, and you wouldn't be able to collect sunlight to make your own food. So this is a super important organelle. Plant cells that don't have chloroplast are not green. Okay, that's how you know. If you look at a plant that's brown or a different color, that means it doesn't have chloroplast. So the last thing we want to discuss is how are these cells organized? Well, cells, a bunch of cells join together and make tissues. A bunch of tissues working together form organs, and a bunch of organs working together form organ systems. If you need an anagram to remember, uh, the one I use is C2s. C2 stands for cells, tissues, organs, organ systems. C2s. Okay? Um, now keep in mind this cellular organization is for multicellular organisms because they're really more specialized where you have um, a nervous system, you have a respiratory system, or a circulatory system, and so on. The unicellular organization is simple. You have a one cell and it does everything. Um, but this cellular organization from cells to tissues, tissues to organs, organs to organ systems, is all for multicellular um, organisms. Okay. So just keep that in mind. That was a really quick um, overview of this lesson on cells where we discussed what a cell is. And cells are the tiniest um, things in an organism keep you alive to carry out the life processes. An organism is any living thing. We also discussed the organelles in plant and animal cells, and we discussed cellular organization. If any of this is confusing, you're still having troubles, feel free to watch the video again or message me on Edmodo.